Okay, so nomenclature of organic compounds, a very vital topic in organic chemistry. Let's see how we can name these two structures on the board. We have an aliphatic organic compound and we have an alicyclic organic compound. Alright? So let's start with the first aliphatic organic compound. Alright? Aliphatic organic compound are straight or branched organic um, structures, but alicyclic or cyclic, they are closed chains rings of organic compounds okay so let's start with this if you want to name an organic compound there are three things to take into cognizance to name an organic compound you must take note of this number one you must count the longest carbon to carbon continuous chain so before you name an organic compound your aim is to count the longest carbon to carbon continuous what chain now, first of all, I want to know my longest carbon to carbon continuous chain. So I'm going to count. If I count from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is not the longest. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If you count straight, it's not the longest. If you count this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You observe that counting branched is the longest carbon to carbon longest chain. So my longest carbon to carbon longest chain is 9. The continuous carbon to carbon longest chain is 9 in the branched chain direction. Now after knowing your longest carbon to carbon chain, alright, that becomes your parent chain. It means my parent chain is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That direction is my parent chain. Any other thing that is added to your parent chain is called the substituent. So I have my parent chain to be from this direction. My counting is this is carbon one, this is carbon two, this is carbon three, this is carbon four, five, six, seven, eight, and what? Nine. So from this direction, I have my parent chain to be nine. And nine is non, N O N, non. But the suffix, since I'm seeing single bonds all through, it means the parent name is called non name. Non is nine. A means it is an alkane homologous series, means it's made up of just single bonds all through. So this is my parent chain in this branch direction. Every other thing that is added to this parent chain is called a substituent. Now let's know how many substituents we have. We have a bromo substituent, alright? We have an ethyl substituent. We have a chloro substituent. We have a fluoro substituent, alright? We have a methyl substituent. We have another methyl substituent. And we have a nitro substituent. So let's start. How many substituents? One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six substituents, all right? Two methyl, and we have other ones are bromo, ethyl, chloro, and chloro nitro substituent. Now, this substituent must follow alphabetical order of arrangement. Now, after getting your longest carbon to carbon parent chain, the next thing is to number from both directions. Yeah, your numbering is giving preference or cognizance to the lowest alphabetical order. Your numbering must be in the direction of the lowest alphabetical order. In all these substituents, the lowest alphabetical order is from B. So that is why my counting started from this direction. Alright? Had it been I had this bromo on this other aspect, my counting will be from the other side. You must give cognizance to the lowest alphabet. Your counting or your numbering must be from the lowest or the smallest alphabet. Alright, so this is carbon 1. Bromo is having carbon 2. Carbon 3, we have ethyl and we have chloro. Carbon 4, carbon 5, we have chloro and we have methyl. Carbon 6, we have nitro and we have another methyl. So let's name this particular organic compound. Let's write out the substituent first. In alphabetical order, bromo comes first. In alphabetical order, B comes first. After bromo, we have chloro. After chloro, we have what? Ethyl. This is B. This is chloro C. This is ethyl E. Alright? After E, we have 
what? N. After N, we have methyl substituent and the nitro substituent will come last. So, arrangement in alphabetical order showing their position. For bromo substituent, we have it as a 2 bromo. So, let's name this. This is going to be 2 bromo. Alright? This is 2 bromo. After bromo substituent, we have a chloro. And the chloro substituent is a carbon 3. So, this is 3 chloro. Alright? After chloro, the next substituent is ethyl. And the ethyl is a carbon 3. So, this is 3 ethyl. Alright? This is 3 ethyl. After ethyl, the next substituent is what? Fluoro. We have our fluoro substituent. We have the fluoro substituent. Okay? The fluoro substituent is a carbon 5. So this is going to be 5 fluoro. Alright? 5 fluoro because the fluoro substituent is at carbon 5. After fluoro, the next one is the methyl. The methyl substance are carbon 5 and carbon 6. Carbon 5 and carbon 6, we have two methyl groups. So this is going to be 5, 6 dimethyl. 5, 6 dimethyl. 5, 6 dimethyl means at carbon 5 and 6, we have a methyl group. And the last one is nitro. Alright? After N, we have N, nitro. And the nitro is at carbon 6. So we have 6 nitro, 6 nitro, and the parent name is no name. Alright? The parent name is no name. The parent name is no name. So the name of this particular organic compound is 2 bromo, 3 chloro, 3 ethyl, 5 chloro, 5,6 dimethyl. 6 nitro no name. That is the name of this organic compound. The first thing you take note of is to count the continuous longest carbon to carbon chain. After counting, you start numbering from the lowest or the smallest alphabet. So I started numbering from here 1, 2, because bromo is the lowest, B is the smallest alphabet. So you have to give it the smallest number. You come from that direction. After numbering from that direction, you name, you put them together in alphabetical order. B, after B, we have a C, chloro, after C, ethyl, chloro, methyl, and what? Nitro, with the parent in no name. So that's the nomenclature for this organic compound. The next organic compound is a cyclic organic compound. Let's see how we can name this. Let's see how we can name this. To so name this, I have a bromo substituent and I have a methyl. Since there is no double bond, if there was a double bond, please listen up. If there was a double bond here, if there was a double bond here, my counting will start from here, one, and it will cross the double bond here becomes two. All right? If I have a double bond or a functional group, your counting must be from that carbon having the double bond or the functional group. But since I do not have a double bond in this particular structure, since there is no double bond or triple bond in this particular structure, you start numbering from the smallest alphabet. You start numbering from the smallest alphabet. Bromo is B, CH3 is methyl. Between B and M, B comes first alphabetically. So we start numbering from here, 1. Why are we numbering here as 1? Because this is the smallest alphabet and there is no double bond or triple bond. So this is 1, this is going to be 2, this is going to be 3, this is 4, 5, and this is what? 6. You start numbering from the smallest alphabet if you do not have a double bond or a triple bond for any other functional group. So this is 1 bromo, 3 methyl, cyclohexane. 1 bromo, 3 methyl, cyclohexane. To write the name of this structure, this is 1 bromo. 1 bromo, alright? 3 methyl, 1 bromo, 3 methyl. This is a cyclic compound, so it will start with cyclo, cyclo, and this is six sided hexane. Why are we ending the game with any? 
because it is made up of single bonds all through. But if you have a double bond anywhere, your counting must be from the carbon having the double bond and it must what? Cross. But since there's no double bond, you start your counting from the smallest alpha bed. This is that on what we can take on nomenclature of organic compounds. I'll see you in the next tutorial video. Subscribe and stay updated. Thank you for watching.